second edition of the Subnational Ease of Doing Business Report for 2023 has been released by the Office of the Presidential Enabling Business Council, or PEBEC. The PEBEC report that measures how easy to do business and provided a ranking of all the 36 Nigerian states and the FCT was first published back in March of 2021. Please welcome my guests on this latest report, Dr. Jumake Uduwale, the head of the PEBEC Secretariat and a special advisor to the Nigerian president on the ease of doing business. Thanks for making the time this evening, madam. Thanks for pleasure. coming. Pleasure. It's a mandate. Uh, talk to me a little bit about uh, the report on uh, the report on ease of doing business. Why was it initiated and why was it focused on subnationals? Well, thanks for having me, Boson. When we started the PEBEC in 2016, we quickly realized that we had to move as one economy. All businesses are domiciled in states. You don't have any businesses really in the FCT or, well, in, in the federal speaking. government. Yeah. So they're all domiciled in a subnational. And it's important mm. that the business mm. climate is harmonized. There's coordination mm. between the federal agencies and the work of the state government agencies. So we entered a collaboration in 2017 with the National Economic Council, that's the NEC, also chaired by the vice president. Yes. And that was, the, that was the reason for the initiative? Yes, to take all the reforms, to cascade PEBEC reforms and PEBEC structure to the subnational level. So each state has a reform champion, each state has an ease of doing business council. And so each state has been uh, implementing reforms for a number of years now. We've been on tour several times. So it's been a fruitful collaboration. And then we decided to have this report, first of all, to augment Nigeria is one of the countries that the World Bank had a specific country report for since about 2014, I think. They'd had about four iterations. Yes. But thankfully, we decided to augment that process. So we started planning our report, and the baseline survey was released in 2021, not long after the World Bank discontinued their own report. So we then deepened, yes, yes we then deepened uh, our own methodology, and then we have the second iteration today. Interesting, what did the first report back in 2021, March? Uh, I know 2020 was the whole pandemic thing, yes. but 2021 report, what did it reveal in, in, in terms of ease of doing business across the 36 states and the FCT? It was a baseline, it was a snapshot of what private sector felt about the business climate. It was to give states and subnationals in total an idea of what private sector felt about their business climate so that they could improve and deepen. We felt that the World Bank tool was a bit shallow. It didn't speak to specific things that affected Nigerian climate, like infrastructure, like security, our skills and labor. It was basically only domiciled around the regulatory environment, which is taxes, uh, starting a business. So we decided to expand that and deepen that. So that snapshot without any input from state governments was what we had in 2021. 2023 is slightly different, and I'll explain the changes in the methodology. Yes, that's my next question. <laughs> uh, as soon as the report came in and, and you sent it out this morning, I, I got it and I put it out on Twitter, and, and a few folks um, uh, asked me about what's the methodology and the ranking and the parameters used in, in, in ranking each state of the, uh, of the Federation and the FCT when it comes to those who are do, in need of doing business. Yeah, so the first framework was developed by a technical working group. It had representation from each geopolitical zone. There was a state representing each zone. And of course, Bureau of Statistics, import, um, investment promotion, export promotion, of course, the PEBEC Secretariat. Um, so we then developed this framework that we gave to a consultant to turn into a methodology for a baseline survey. We, as I said earlier, we went to security and infrastructure, access to information, workforce readiness, and the regulatory environment. Mm -hmm. This time, the first thing was we then did a lot of uh, feedback sessions with the state governments. What do you take out of the feedback from the private sector? And what do you have to tell us and share with us on what you've done as a state? So the deepening of the methodology inputs a lot of uh, state information. We had an opportunity for states to submit their reforms. About 11 states participated in that exercise, talking about the reforms that they've been able to implement and giving us data that we could verify from the private sector. We also unbundled infrastructure from stable and secure environment. That was also feedback from the private sector. And we added economic opportunity because of what we were hearing from private sector around FX and access to credit. So it's a more nuanced uh, snapshot and it feeds into what states have said they've done, whether or not private sector have gotten that message and that information and whether they, they validated that those reforms were their priorities and now the nuances that have come out of this report. 
technically six pillars uh, in terms of the um, uh, uh, parameters or the six indicators. Mm -hmm. but basically, it, it just six around infrastructure. Now each of them has got a, a bit of a yes. uh, subset within yes. each of those uh, indicators. Uh, in terms of what we have seen so far, and this is a, it looks like infrastructure accounts for about 22.8 in this uh, pie chart I'm, I'm looking at on the screen right now. Infrastructure seems to be at the top of the yeah. pile. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting. You know, the mandate of the PEBEC is actually soft infrastructure, although mm. the members of the, of the PEBEC uh, are Minister of uh, uh, infrastructure, you know, Works and Housing, mm -hmm. Power, but really our mandate is around regulatory soft infrastructure. But there's really no way to take a snapshot. You know, private sector agnostic, they really don't care. They don't care whether it's federal government, state government, local government. They just feel pain and they just feel... You know, it's a bundle. So we yeah. had to, to take a snapshot together. So yeah. we had to ask them about yeah. infrastructure, security and stable environment. Between those two, it's 41%. Mm. And then the other, yes, and I, then the I, other I four kind of split between 14, 15% each, making up about 59%. Exactly. So between those two, mm. if states would just focus on those and work on those, along with the federal government, then certainly Nigeria's business climate. I mean, this is what you and I know anecdotally, <laughs> but this is the data speaking yes, to speaking, it. Speaking to it. Yes. I'm, in, I'm interested in, in why transparency and accessibility of information. Uh, why what are the up? states doing? Yes. Yeah, it's the only indicator that actually went up. And the reason is that a lot of states have paid attention to mm. having investment promotion agencies. They've had more stakeholder engagements. They now have more websites. It's mm. really the work that we've been doing around ease of doing business. There are a lot more stakeholder interventions. Our team has been on tour at least three times around the country. And um, so there's a lot more discussion on social media. Mm. At least the, the effort is seen. It's, it's really A for effort. I must say the states have really mm. picked up the ease of doing business agenda since 2017. Unanimously, the NEC and the NGF have adopted this agenda, plus the FCT, and they've been working on it. Uh, so I go back to these six um, indicators. Mm -hmm. Secure and stable environment. Well, does that speak to insecurity matters of that nature? Because it looks like, from everybody's point of view, this is infrastructure still accounting for 22.8%, yes, yes. despite what everybody was saying yes. about the level of security across the country. You know, it's a funny thing. We're talking to businesses and we're asking them well, those are business the on the ground. related questions. Yes. So we're asking them not about sort of terrorism or kidnapping. We're saying in your business, did you make a report to the police? What happened? Was, the, was, there, was there a robbery on your premises? Okay. What happened? So what's that secure uh, environment where your business is situated? Do you mm. get burglaries? So this is speaking to their business Good. bottom line. Mm. So there are specific questions that are yes. targeted at businesses. Mm. And I think they answered quite fairly and honestly what they felt. Some, some states even, some respondents even says, I feel safe where I am. I can't speak for the rest of the state. So also where businesses are situated even if they have to pay more to feel safer, businesses are taking those decisions. Mm. On the ground. Yes. So we've got to, uh, in the stock market, you talk about the top gainers and top losers. I'm sure you, you know <laughs> that. So, uh, so it, it, we have, okay, so you've got the top performers and the main laggers. I quickly went through the report and I was looking at the map of Nigeria and was going to say, oh, hold on a second. Okay, so here we go. Mm. In terms of the top performers. Yeah. You know, it's interesting, and we get this question a lot. Uh, Gombe has retained the top position for Gombe the Gombe second State. time. Yes, and that's, uh, I'm looking at the map yeah. of Nigeria now. It's somewhere in the, in the north. Uh, yeah, uh, it's in the, the northeast. Yeah. Northeast, yes. yes. And, and Jigawa has moved Number up to two. second. They were third before. Uh, they just switched places with Sokoto. So what we see is northeast and northwest doing quite well. Now, it sounds counterintuitive to many people, but actually not to us at the Public Secretariat, because this is one thing we've known for quite a while. When there is less complexity in an economy, mm. if you do the work, then it's much easier to give satisfaction to the businesses around you. So if you take the global rankings, you would have Singapore, you'd have New Zealand topping the charts. You would never have a U.S. topping the charts. You wouldn't. So what we Tell say, <laughs> yeah, because there's more complexity. The so US. what we say, and there's a bigger, you know, economy. So what mm. we say is that at the global level, if you're top 50, your business environment is decent. It's fine for your private sector to thrive. If it's on the African continent, mm. you'll see Mauritius, Rwanda mm. topping the charts. Mm. So naturally, it makes sense when you come to Nigeria, if 
the smaller economy puts in the work, then they come out gold. It's just the way it is. So if the larger economies, because you see where the where is our GDP drawn from? If you look at if you if you disaggregate the states into GDP, if the larger economies also put in the work, it may be tougher because they're larger. There's more complexity. There are more people to satisfy. But if they put in the work, the private sector will reward them. It may be tougher, but that's why they have to get even more organized. Uh, so that takes me back to the map of Nigeria in terms of the overall ease of doing business satisfaction. Mm -hmm. So I'm seeing a lot of green shoots, but this green look a little bit, some look greener than the others. <laughs> yes, so that's that's what I spoke about. <laughs> that you see the the you see there north northwest West, and the, you see northeast. Yes, and, and specific states, not all states. Mm -hmm. So the states that are working on reforms. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't find all states. It's not even a matter of size or even the... It, it's really about the states that have... I can speak to the efforts that the, the teams that are on top mm. put into their work. I mean, the Gombe State team, the Jigawa State team are really dedicated to this agenda. And it's paying off. Interesting. A few other states that are a little bit in a light green, mm -hmm. a bit around the middle and southeast, a bit to, the, to a those states. What are the issues around some of these states that they need yeah. to work on, for example? For I mean, so, so they're, they're larger states. Kaduna is another very strong team. Nassar are strong. Nassar, are, interestingly, the score went up, but their ranking went slightly down because some other states overtook them. <laughs> yeah, so that's also, that also plays into it. Who, who are your pairs and, and what are they doing? With states like Edo, they've also done quite a bit of work, and we work very closely with the Edo State team. What happened with Edo State is the power, there's a power challenge. And the private sector marked them really quite down for electricity in particular. Now, when we say that electricity is an, is an area that it, there's, there's some state input, there's some federal input. Well, you know, private sector don't want to know. All they want is power. You know, so Gombe has about 10 hours. Bono has about three hours a day. So, I mean, but, but, but where private sector are very opinionated and vocal, it's a perception index. That's where communication comes in. A lot mm. of communication needed to make sure that stakeholders know what's being done, know that the state is aware of the challenges, know that the state is working on the challenges. And sometimes even when work has started, there's a bit of a lag. We analyzed this data over a 17-week period. We made sure we didn't do it during election cycle. So we collected the data before election cycle. And you know we're releasing it now after elections have been announced specifically because we didn't want this report politicized. What it is, and I try to get states to move away from being focused on the rankings. We have to rank them because that's where we get a lot of attention from them. We get their full <laughs> attention on a day like this. We were over 100 analyzing this for two hours on a Zoom session this afternoon and a, a lot of piercing questions. So we had to have a lot of rigor yes. and make sure that everything was right. But what it is, is we're actually more interested in the growth in GDP for each of those economies, because mm. that's where the rubber meets the road. Mm. So even if you're not a top ranker, if we see your score improving and your GDP improving and your private sector communicating verifications of the reforms and that your reforms are particularly meeting the pain points, priorities, because we've had states like in Delta State, for example, implemented reforms, but their own private sector says those are not quite our priorities. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And all this is perception index is from private sector. And we had a lot of triangulation to make sure we solved for emotive responses. Response. We mm. tripled the amount of, of uh, respondents this time at a huge cost to us, actually. The last time was wow. just under a thousand respondents. This time is about two thousand eight hundred and fifty wow. around the country. Very, very robust intervention. Uh, interesting. And I'll go back a little bit to the regulatory environment uh, pillar out of the six, uh, which focuses on business registration, license renewal, contract enforcement, land and property acquisition, and payment of taxes. It looks like the pillar that has uh, the most in terms of subsets. Mm, yeah, because it's the traditional pillar for ease of doing business. Mm, you know, the regulatory, mm, it's actually a mm, regulatory mm, intervention. Mm. So that's where we actually, that's our bread and butter, if you will, <laughs> um, at Pebec. That's where it all started from, from starting a business, paying taxes. the basics. Land, yeah. So those things, really, if, if states focus even on, on those things, 
uh, their, their satisfaction would go up quite significantly from their MSMEs mm -hmm. because those are like the things that they encounter on a daily basis. So the, so the statistics, the, the data shows that even focusing on regulatory pillar, and you know, this is good information for any state government to take and have a robust plan. So it's actually paired nicely with our SABER intervention, which you also know about, mm -hmm. to make sure that states can have their annual uh, reform agenda and they can actually prioritize their regulatory environment. Now they can obviously uh, work harder on infrastructure because the legislative environment has enabled that with the, with the constitutional amendment last week. Um, skills and labor, we have a number of states, Lagos State has done a lot with LSETF working on that area. So we have um, different areas where state governments have been pushing and can continue to push, but as a whole, because we don't play favorites mm -hmm. at, at our office, as a whole, uh, we've, we've held steady, we've moved f uh, upward marginally, but it just shows what the, the sustained pressure is there, but we need to have an inflection point. So a lot of work for the next administration. Interesting, uh, Dr. Oduwale, uh, about our neighbor government points to a few states in Nigeria, the big boys, Lagos, Kano, uh, Rivers, you mentioned Kaduna, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. you mentioned Kaduna yeah. uh, earlier. So, so what are the points here for these major economic hubs, and, and I'll call them hubs, as yeah. it were, uh, uh, in Nigeria, in terms of their ranking? Well, you know, I talked about complexity and, and how difficult it is for larger economies. There needs to be a concerted effort on communication. So quite a few states we know are doing things. Some didn't even submit to us, so we couldn't use it empirically. And we know anecdotally that stuff is going on. But those who did submit, we then verified with private sector. It's not enough for a state to have reforms. Do your private sector know about the reforms? Were those the private sector's priorities? Were there enough stakeholder engagement? So we at the PEBEC, we've been engaging constantly with private sector since 2016. All the time we're speaking publicly. We have stakeholder forums. We're on the news. We're on and it's because the relevance of the reform to the MSME, you have to prioritize. Every year we have a strategic plan and we're prioritizing what it is private sector are saying is their priority. So you may have paying taxes, you may have access to credit, you may have, you know, whatever it is at that point in time, FX comes up a lot. Not all of them are things that are within <laughs> our mandate, like power, like mm -hmm. FX, things come up like customs issues or a trading nation, but we then prioritize them. And then we try to communicate we work with the MDAs. We try to communicate. You know, we released our EO1 rankings about three weeks ago. Yes. And then it's a journey of continuous improvement. Mm -hmm. So even this ranking has a, an input from 2021 because it's a continuous improvement. So by 2025, 2027, we hope to just see the momentum grow. And we're going to be tracking it with the GDP increase in these states. So you've come a long way over the past couple of years now. President Buhari just signed. Uh, the business facilitation law, um, which I'm sure you really excited about and the rest of your team. Yes. Then he went on over the last week or two, signing a few other presidential orders around enabling state governments, for example, to take ownership of power generation distribution and things like that. Do you think these are part of ease of doing business coming from the top at the federal for going down the way to the subnationals. Do you Certainly. think things like this will help subnationals do better? Certainly. We've had a robust conversation at the NEC, at the NGF, or why we would track electricity when most of the um, sort of uh, impetus to move that needle is at the federal level. But you know, there's some state governors who have championed and fought for the electricity distribution around their state, for solar projects, like Governor of Jigawa has been phenomenal in upping electricity access, and this is what their private sector tell us. So we also said that it's a leadership responsibility. So even if it's not within the state's purview directly, the, the governor is now the, the champion mm -hmm. at the federal <coughs> level to support the states in getting those regulatory enablers mm -hmm. into the states. And now with, with the signing of, of these acts, the, 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 the state can even just go ahead, whether it's rail, whether it's power, get the investors in. And, and um, the important point is that it's one economy. Private sector doesn't really 
uh, is agnostic. A lot of businesses work across state mm -hmm. lines. A lot of businesses, of course, uh, engage with federal agencies mm -hmm. as well as state agencies. Yes, you get your raw materials from yeah. the state. You take it to this yeah. place. You get human capital exactly. from here. So, it all so comes we have together. to solve for private sector, not for mm -hmm. the convenience of government or levels of government. Mm -hmm. You know we work with all arms and states of government. We work mm -hmm. with the National Assembly. That's why we have the Act, also the Judiciary. But we try to just focus. This is a perception index from the lens of the private sector, mm -hmm. telling government, both federal and state, what they think about the business environment in Nigeria. Do you think we're getting a bit more of uh, um, points together that you think that Moving forward, we'll be able to do a whole lot more uh, as we as we transit into um, the administration, and and then we can we can we can ramp up a whole lot more on this ranking, and we'll come out better. Maybe when you release the 2024 2025 report. Yeah, I really do. I think the intervention is one that whose time has come. We started in 2017. It, we we started gathering momentum. More states uh, were inaugurated their ease of doing business councils. States have their reform champions. We have retreats. We have technical deep dives. The collaboration between the PEBEC and the NEC, of course, we have the same chair, His Excellency the mm -hmm. Vice President. But beyond that, going forward, we've seen that this is a depoliticized agenda. We work with all arms, levels, parties, everybody. Everyone is interested in the business climate. National Assembly, local governments, everyone. So it's, it's a Nigeria project. In fact, when we go to the World Bank then, it was Team Nigeria. We go with people from Lagos State, Kano State, uh, Customs, Immigration. You know, we go as one team and we represent the country. And it's been a progressive uh, in, the, in the right direction. The whole country, we may not be going as fast, but we're determined that no area, no region left behind. This is a project available. The SABA is available to everybody. That's $750 million on the table for three years. And we know that with the continuous improvement, as we continue to have this osmosis and peer learning and, and healthy rivalry, it's going to work for the benefit of Nigerian MSMEs. If I'm, if I'm <laughs> the governor of Gombe State, I'll be on the road right now asking <laughs> investors and flashing this report and say, hey, I'm number one. And then uh, I can use that for, to, to stock to investors. But very interesting numbers. Thank you very much. The top three states you can see there uh, in Nigeria. Voucher at number six, Anambra at number seven, Kaduna ranking number eight, Yobe State number nine, Plateau at number 10, and Lagos at 29. You got a top uh, 10, and then of course you got a couple of states down. Thank you so much for unpacking this report for us and Pleasure. for speaking with us here first. On the yes. Rice News, <laughs> after you release this report today, yeah, yeah. we just have to go for a rate because, again, we need those investments from outside. Yeah. And like you said, money does not discriminate. As soon as they're coming to Nigeria, they're not coming to the federal government, they're coming to estates within Nigeria and all the way down. Thank you so much. Well done. It's a pleasure. Thank, Thank you, you, madam. To you yeah. and your, the rest of your team. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jumak Kodowale, Head of Secretariat of PEBEC, and a special advisor to the Nigerian President on the ease of doing business.